Hello, welcome to Siege Budget Brews. I'm Tim, and tonight, continuing our series of beginner CDH Metabusters, we're going to talk about Chain Veil to Fairy. But before we get started, please check out our Discord and our Patreon. Links are in the description below. And if you like our content, please hit that like, share, subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Chain Veil to Fairy is a mono blue control deck um, at, with, by, curated by ASM. Uh, this is probably one of the older... CDH decks that's kind of still still around. It's definitely not as popular as it once was, but I think it's very, still very effective. And it actually um took a version of this deck took the Cassius uh Cassius Marsh tournament over the summer. The oh god, what is it called? The 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 CDH tournament with like the power. Uh, it, this actually took first place. So for those of you who don't know. Um, Teferi Temporal Archmage is a Planeswalker uh, for two blue, four colorless, comes in with five loyalty, and then has three activated abilities, well, and one static ability. The static ability is that you can use it as your commander. The, it has a plus one of, look at the top two cards of your library, put one in hand, one on bottom. It has a minus one, which is the one, which is going to be the main thing we're going to use besides the plus one, uh, to, uh, you minus one, and then you untap for up to four target permanents. So the Teferi combos with a with one card known as the Chain Veil, which is a legendary artifact for four and then costs four to activate and then you tap it. And then for each Planeswalker you control, you may activate its loyalty ability in an additional uh, loyalty ability once additional time each turn. So the thing of note is that that ability stacks so each time you activate the Chain Veil, you'll get additional Planeswalker activations. And if new Planeswalkers enter the battlefield, they will see all of those previous Chain Veil activation. So with the Fury, the way it works is, is you play to Fury, play the Chain Veil, tap the Chain Veil, and then you need three permanent, three other permanents besides the Chain Veil that generate six mana or more. So the deck plays a lot of stuff like, which isn't hard to do in a mono blue deck because you can play things like High Tide, you can play Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Grim Monolith, Basalt Monolith. All of those things will generate the, 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 the six mana that you need because what you have to do is you have to have four to keep pumping into the Chain Veil and then you need the two extra mana left over for later in the combo. But essentially, you pay four and activate the Chain Veil, tap your three permanents, that will make your six mana, minus one to fairy, untap the chain veil and those three permanents, and then you repeat, keep repeating that until you um, exhaust to fairy. Then on the last, on the last minus one, instead of untapping the chain veil, you untap four permanent, four mana producing permanents instead. All right, and then that will net you enough mana to recast Teferi and pay the commander tax. And then Teferi will enter the battlefield and we'll see all of the previous Chain Veil activations. And then you can just kind of keep repeating that process by untapping the Chain Veil with the minus one and then untapping the permanents and so on and so forth. And then once you've done that enough times, you can start pumping it into Teferi's once you've like kind of gotten to a game state where you've generated unbound mana, essentially, then you can start plussing to fairy to draw your deck because you have a bunch of chain veil activation. So you can kind of do it over and over and over again. And then you start minusing them to reset them and, and, and to get them off the board to draw your deck. All right. So that's kind of like the main combo. Since you're in mono blue, you have lots of tutors to find artifacts. You have lots of rocks, but we also have a couple of like backup lines as well. Uh, the main one is going to be Hallbreaker Horror. A Hallbreaker Horror will allow you to, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, or whenever you cast the spell, choose up to one, return target spell you don't control to its owner's hand. So that can be used to help, like, kind of protect your win. But the second ability is return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So every time you cast a spell, you can bounce a mana rock. So if you have two mana positive rocks, you can just keep playing them and returning the other one to your hand over and over and over and over again. You just need any spell to kind of start the loop. And then once you've done that, you can start playing Teferi and then bounce one of the mana positive rocks to your hand 
activate Teferi, replay the mana deposit of rock. And since you have unbound mana, you can just keep casting Teferi, start blessing them, and draw your deck that way. Outside of that, there's like two main hard outlets in the deck. Uh, the first one obviously re revolves around you activating the Chain Veil a bunch, or having like the Hallbreaker Horror to be able to bounce it. And that is Ugin the Spirit Dragon. In this case, Ugin the Spirit Dragon is you're using the plus two ability to deal three damage to target creature or player. What that'll do is, is either you'll have infinite Chain Veil activations to just plus him a bunch of times, or you can use the Hallbreaker Horror and one of your mana positive rocks that's still in your hand to play Ugin, activate, play the mana positive rock, bounce the Ugin back to your hand, and then play the Ugin to bounce the rock. Activate in between, yada, 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 till you've lightning bolted everybody to death. And then the last one is kind of like a tutor and then a mana advantage engine and can be used as an outlet. Tezzeret's the Tezzeret the Seeker. The way this works is you kind of either need to do it one of two ways. You either need to act plus one Tezzeret and then let it get back around to you, which isn't the greatest, but like if you're in that spot, that can be the thing. Um, the other one is, is if you can activate the Chain Veil one time and plus him to five and then minus him, you're running like, oh, 22 artifacts plus a Phyrexian Metamorph, and that will turn them all into five fives. So any artifacts that start the turn in play, if you turn them into five fives, they will not be, they will not suffer summoning sickness. That is just like another kind of backup outlet, just kind of so you know. And then... Being a mono blue, you have lots of interaction. Most of it is stack interaction in the form of counter spells like Mind Break Trap, Force of Will, Force of Negation, stuff like that. Uh, obviously, like Mana Drain Counter Spell, uh, Swan Song, all the usual suspects. Then you get bounce spells like Chain of Vapor, Cyclonic Rift. You can play Rapid Hybridization, Pongify, Reality Shift, Resculpt. All of those are all things that you can use to kind of interact with your opponent's board or interact with them on the stack. And then there's like a few notable cards that just to kind of want it to go over. So like Tezzeret obviously is um, a tutor, also can be used as a hard outlet. But then you get cards like Curse Totem to shut off creature abilities because you're not playing any. All your abilities are triggered if they're creatures. And then everything else is either activated planeswalkers or artifacts. Back to basics, you're running like 20 something islands. So back to basics is a non thing for you. Uh, Trinosphere, uh, ironically, you can play under Trinosphere pretty well. The only time it's kind of a problem is early game. And by early, early, I mean when you're on the, um, like, the force, like the early force of will turns before you develop. But generally, this isn't going to go down that early. Usually it's going to come down like after you've played a couple of rocks, then you play that. Because your main combo costs six mana, four mana. So once all your rocks are in play, three ball doesn't affect it because your chain belt costs four and your commander costs six. And then once you have on bound mana, transfer doesn't matter. Uh, and like for tutors, you've got like transmute artifact, world of invention, you get spell seeker. You've got like all the treasure mage, trinket mage, trophy mage, like that kind of stuff. Uh, dress down is a nice little piece of tech. Uh, this is really good for stopping Oracle, which is a very common win con. Uh, just all create. It's got flash. It draw. It replaces itself when it comes into play, and then you all creatures lose all abilities, and then in a turn you sack it. So it's really good to be able to like kind of stop that those dockside breach turns, stop the Oracle turns, like those kind of things, as well as as well as other things like a meal with dockside that type of stuff. Lastly. Uh, something that you don't see too much these days is Tabernacle the Pendrel Veil. So this one's got like a little bit of a weird wording. Oracle text on it is, which is what we're going to talk about is all creatures have at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy this creature unless you pay one. And by your, it means like the individual creatures gain that ability. So at their controller's upkeep, they are destroyed unless that controller pays one mana. Uh, it used to read bury was kind of like an older term where it kind of sometimes meant sacrifice. Sometimes it meant like destroy, but can't be generated. It kind of, it's kind of been all over the place, but it's been reworded to just say destroy unless they pay one. 
Um, but that's a really good piece of like, especially if you're in like a dork heavy meta, that will kneecap people very harshly, especially with a cursed totem. Like, makes it pretty hard. Beyond that, I'm trying to think of like kind of any anything worth note. The thing that's nice about Teferi is that it pretty much runs all the mono blue staples. While not all of it is used in like, say, like if you want to switch to Urza or some of the other mono blue commanders. Teferi has been around a long time. It's always been pretty solid. Um, especially it will reward your play skill very well. Again, being in mono blue, it'll have a little bit of a, it'll have a pretty decent curve, learning curve, because you the biggest thing with this is you gotta learn to not like overextend yourself. Because being the mono blue commander, your opponents will a lot of times make try to make you answer everything. So that way they can kind of greed out and you get left behind. So you have to kind of be able to navigate the ability to be judicious with your interaction because you're not the fastest deck, but you are definitely like a very stable and very potent deck. I, this was one of those decks that kind of got taken off the DDB off their main page, maybe about two months ago. And to be honest, I mean, out of the, out of the mono blue decks that are left, it's one of the, it's, one of the two that's done something in the last 12 months. And I felt that it should be highlighted. And I wanted to make sure to, um, you know, let it shine a little bit. Plus, I think ASM has done a really good job maintaining this list. And this was like one of my first CH decks. And it did really well. It does have its de deficiencies. And sometimes those can be just creature combat. Because you can't answer everything. So if you're in a, like a combat heavy meta, sometimes... This can be a little, little soft to play into those pots, but it does have a very good, very streamlined plan and will, will, will carry you well. And then you can also transition it like 90, 90, 92 of the cards play, get played in other mono blue decks as well, like Urza or something, if you find it's not really for you. So with that, uh, have a good night and goodbye.